Today we are going to review the KT Dragonfly downwind burn with the man, the legend Tony. Let's do it. Thanks so much for joining us. Today we have a very exciting one with the man, the legend Tony. We've, you've seen him in some of our past videos. Um, actually featured Tony on our uh, light wind uh, video for wing falling, which um, was very popular. We used the Dragonfly for, for, um, for this video. But today I wanted to go over more specifically the dragonfly and why uh, Tony loves it so much. The one you love is the, the 105. Correct. 7.4 and it's 19, is it 19, 19? It's 19 and a half wide. 19 and a half wide. And you weigh? Uh, about 165. Yeah. So you got it um, for wing falling more specifically. Yeah, I, I mean basically, yeah, Originally for light wind, you know, I had, okay, think about SUP downwind, haven't got there yet, but really this board, I use it specifically for, you know, light wind foiling. Yeah. Is the main, the main purpose right so, off the bat. So what's, you know, you, you can find a different, different like shape of board. You can find like for the same volume, you might be able to find a board that's like longer and narrower. Uh, you can find some that are like shorter and wider, and I feel like the dragonfly, the dragonfly sits somewhere in between. It's not too extreme that it's super long, but it's not super short either. And to me, in that combo of length, uh, how wide it is with the volume, I find that it's a very good option for that works really well for winging, and it works really well with the paddle. Um, a longer shape is going to make it easier with the paddle in, from what I've, I've found. Um, but sometimes I feel like it's not going to be as good when you go winging. Uh, and, and then a shorter one might feel really good when you go winging because you have all, you know, more power than with a paddle, you have that wing. Um, but, but then when you go with a paddle, it might not be as easy to get up uh, on foil. So, so this shape, um, in my opinion, is like my favorite all around. Now there are some features that we find specifically on the Dragonfly, like the, the tail uh, that kind of like tapers in the back. Right. A more round um, bottom in the front, and then that kind of like step bottom that's very specific to KT. Um, you've spent a lot of time designing boards, like downwind subboard back in the days when you were um, racing um, SUPs. What do you feel like these features, what do you like about these features? Well, I think this whole board, if you look at it, I mean, I call it the flying fish. I mean, the, the way I can get it to launch out of the water and it's fish shaped, you look at the tail. So back in the board shaping days is you wanted the important part was the tail because it's like a watermelon seed in your finger you want that thing to pop yeah. out so the same thing with the water you want it to you want to have that release you want to have and the other thing with these boards is i really like the front part of the board this bottom has a really good displacement and i think when you start pumping or you're in light wind you want to pump that board up it seems to just want to pop out of the water and not get any suction yeah. with the water. Yeah, exactly. And so you have the combination of the tail on the front, and it, it, it's a slippery thing. It, it, wants, it feels like it really wants to take off. That's actually a good point, uh, which I've heard from, from different designs that some, some birds have maybe a flatter bottom, and, and it seems like the flatter bottom seems to stick a bit more at the takeoff and that kind of like round bottom seem to release from the water a bit quicker. Yeah, because you, when you get a flat surface on the water, you can create a vacuum, yeah, especially yeah. at a, a low speed. And so when you go to pop that thing up sometimes, it's, it, it sticks. It, if you have it completely flat, yeah, it's gonna wanna pull the water yeah, with yeah, it yeah. and then pop it, yeah. you know? Whereas I feel like 
Obviously this with completely rounded bottom or partial, partial V up in that nose there, it, it tends to, you know, I mean, it's, the thing's going through the water better. Yeah. And yeah. so it's going to release from the water better when you get the lift on it, I yeah, think. Yeah. And that's what I found with my experience. Another really good thing is the track, not only where the track is positioned on the bottom, it seems to work with um, all of the falls that we've tried really. Um, AFS, you know, you are on go fall when it's stronger wind, right. sub fall in lighter wind. It just works and it's a long track, so it really allows for maximum, um, uh, you know, positioning of your foil, no matter what brand and size foil you are going to use. Construction, I mean, this burn is very strong. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've should have, I've probably could have had some dings in it already bounced it off a few things and I look at, oh no, what did I do? And, and you know, I got a little scratch here or something like that. And you know, it's, it's really, I mean, I've pretty much ridden it for the last two or three months and two months at least, you know, in heavy conditions and set it down on rocks and stuff. And it held up pretty well. Other thing I see on your burn is you've added uh, a vent. So, when you order your Dragonfly, it comes with a vent plug. Um, so the, the bird is going to fly. Uh, it comes with the vent plug um, removed. And then you, you, know, you put it on when you receive your burn. And then you went through a process. It's not necessary, but it's a good point to mention um, that you added like a self-venting. Yeah, this is basically like a Gore-Tex vent. Um, on my boards, I like to have them kind of over vented. I'd rather have two vents. So if I'm traveling up over a mountain pass or something, you know, you're going to have pressure changes. Obviously, if I'm traveling, I'm going to loosen this up to let it breathe. And then I got this as a backup. So, you know, this foam, all this foam in here can, you know, build up pressure. And as soon as I can get the pressure to keep it regulated, I mean, last thing I want it to do, and it may not happen, um, I may not have even had to put that in there. This is just kind of a backup for me if I, you know, forgot to loosen this yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that. Um, but I want to preserve the construction of this board as, as, as long as I can because I'm going to be riding this thing for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, not, not, not a huge deal, but, um, you know, something to know. It's not a self-venting plug, so you have to put it on. You have to remove it if you are going to fly and uh, Tony decided to install his own. Yeah, especially so, if you put it in a hot car. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the thing that really kills the boards. Yeah. You know, causes delamination, so. So now um, we've, we've, we've made the video on light wind, but what's interesting is like slowly over the last two months that you've been using it, you started really transitioning from using it only in light wind for winging to now also in strong wind and it's becoming your one burnt quiver. Yeah, I've, you know, I get down here and then the wind takes off and it's kind of like I'm lazy and I don't want to switch everything over to my other board. And I had this one all set up one time and I was like, well, I'll go ahead and put the smaller, faster wing on there. I want to go fast. So I'm like, well, this thing looks like a rocket. This thing's going to make it go fast. And then I noticed that I'm using smaller wings to get up and going. And I was like, well, this is cool. And it's just, I, I don't know, the way the board behaves, running over the top of the waves, going fast. And it was like transitioning into turns. I, I'm just used to standing on it. And, you know, I'm not pumping or anything. I'm just like whipping turns out. Plus it's narrow. I can turn around and look and see where the foil is in the water. If I do too sharp of a turn, uh, you know, the rail's further from the water because I got a narrower board. I mean, we started off with what? 30 inch wide boards a yeah, while yeah. back, a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah. And you know, I went down to 24 and now we're like, if you would have told me I'd be riding a 19 and a half, <laughs> I'd tell you you're nuts, you know? But it, it's like super stable. And yeah. um, I think too, the big thing that I find, you know, having longer SUP boards and now having this board is you have a lot of fore and aft stability. So when I go to get on the board, all I have to worry about is log rolling. Okay, and I got the wing like this, and if the winds are really strong, I've turned and gone downwind, grabbed the wing and jumped to my feet, and then cranked up wind, and I was good to go. And I was like shocked. 
So something that interest, in, interesting in what you said with the how wide it is. So I found that any burn narrower than 21 become unstable and you have to learn how to uh, deal with it. You know, when you have the wing, use the wing as leverage. When you have the paddle, use the paddle as leverage. And as the board gets narrower than, let's say, around 21, it's the same technique and it doesn't get any harder. So I was in Hood River, I tried a prototype that was 16 inch wide. And I was like, that thing looks crazy. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to stand on it. And if you use the same technique, it just, it works. So now, is there a point in going wider for somebody that's maybe, let's say, want to get into it, and so they are going to choose uh, a 21 uh, inch wide burn thinking it's going to be easier. In my opinion, it's not going to be that much easier. You're still going to have to figure out the balance, um, how to make it, uh, how to stand on it. But it's really going to decrease your efficiency. So in my opinion, is it really worth it to go with a burn that's wider? Not necessarily because it's still not going to be that stable. You are going to have to learn how to use it. Um, but it's drastically going to reduce uh, how quickly you, you can get up on foil. So now, you know, exactly like you said, you use it in, in strong wind, but you are able to use a smaller wing. And that's, that's nice because now you are not always overpowered when you ride. And once you get used to riding just good, it's kind of hard to going back and riding overpowered all the time just because at the takeoff you need that power. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing is I want to have something where I have to really work this board to get it to fly. Because once it's flying, like, you know, I was in the gorge for two days with a two and a half meter wing, both days. And I was overpowered sometimes, but I was flying, I was going fast. And so that's the other thing too is it depends on each individual. Uh, throughout all the water sports that I've done, I've told people like, okay, if you want to stick to something sa stable, stable and you don't want to have that point of like having to get better with something, for one thing, the foils give us a lot of stability. Yeah. That's why we're able to go to these narrow boards, but you want your abilities to work to the board because I always find that I'm a way happier camper when I get on something and go, oh boy, this is going to be this is going to be a challenge, but the cool part is, is that's a big obstacle to get over and you get over it and you're like, wow, yeah, now we're ripping, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, so I'm standing on this thing in flat water like it's a dock, Yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like, okay, I wait for a gust and boom, I can pop it up, you know, yeah, or yeah. then I get into strong winds and I know how the board's going to react because I want to put myself kind of like I'm a crash test dummy. I'm yeah. going to take it out. I'm going to skip it off the water and, and see what the nose does and see where the water hits and like spear some waves and say, okay, am I going to crash? And it's like, I come through the other side and I'm like still foiling. And I was like, okay, on my other board, I might have I crashed a few times. Yeah, yeah. I had the thing hit me in the head last trip down, you know, I was like, put that away. And I jumped on this and had a blast, you know? So now, um, in terms of with a paddle, uh, if you were going to get into like more like you know serious about like getting into downwind sub falling for you um you probably would need a, a bigger volume if it's going to be rough out there um i've seen you like you have no problem balancing on flat water with the 105 liters with a paddle but for sure if you go in downwind sub falling condition which involves of course like more chop it's going to be moving it's 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 a bit more challenging so like if you wanted to truly like dial in your downwind sub funding maybe something around like 120 liters maybe would be yeah yeah and I'm, i may even go up more than that yeah you know i may want something like that's eight feet or you know an eight two or something yeah something that's wider where i have the whole deck is pretty much keeping out of the water yeah. and then if i'm in chop you know, it, if it starts to submarine or something, it's going to get frustrating for me. So, yeah, I'm going to want, you know, and, and that all goes back to the SUP stuff. Everybody riding 12s. Well, I had a 14 and that was a wave catching machine. And I could that thing was so thick and it was skip off the water. And I knew like, OK, 
this is this is my ride yeah you know so yeah you could i would probably yeah i'm gonna i may have to get another board if i really decide to do that um I don't know if I, I build one or I get one. Yeah, um, I mean, ultimately, I really I really want to work down to riding this. Exactly. If Ult I if I get into the SUP, ultimately, and as I get my abilities better. Once you kind of like you know improve or like get your downwind sub falling uh, journey like going um, here, you know, we are in Idaho. You spend most of your time. We don't have right. that much condition, so it's kind of hard. If you were in a gorge you probably would start with a bigger board, but I think pretty quickly you would be back down to this burn, which you use for light wind winging, strong wind winging, and now you would have one burn quiver. Right, and the other thing that I'm already noticing getting used to this board is two days ago I was out in light winds and the wing tip was in the water and I was just waiting for a gust. So I'm on the board and I'm doing the pumping thing and I was actually starting to propel the board forward. and I there was nothing in my wing. I was just balancing yeah, yeah. a little bit with it. And I was just getting used to, okay, get used to this board rocking up and down, get the feel for it, get the muscle memory going. And I think that is, that's the key is when you have something that is tippy, that's a high performance tool basically, and you have to bring your abilities yeah. to that machine. You know, a lot of people are riding low volume boards and that's great, shorter boards. Hey, whatever's working for you, you know, put it in the comments. But one of the things that I like about this board is, um, I mean, they're very light. What is this, like 12 pounds? Yeah, yeah. And where you're standing on this board, and it's really interesting because you got this, this mass back here behind the foil, and, you know, you're in the center of the board, and I was able just to carve and play with the board, and I don't know, I'm not, you know, I'm not an engineer or anything, but I'm wondering if this counterweight swinging around just a little bit back here makes it in combination with here, and you're in the center of the board. Makes it feel like you have a small, you are carving like a small bone. Yeah, because I'm standing bone. in the center of this board and I'm looking down at the foil and I was like, wow, I'm right in the middle of this thing. And maybe that plays into the whole efficiency thing is like, hey, you got yourself right in the center. And, you know, you, I was just, I, I go upwind and stall and then I'll just throw the thing around and grab some wind and then ride away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like such a cool feeling and, and even in light winds, yeah, I'll yeah. just like, okay, let's take it to where I, I'm going to stall and fall off or am I going to come around, you know, find, find the limitations of everything. Which I think is, is when, you, when you think about getting your first downwind burn, yeah, volume, um, how you think about volume is different um, because if you were saying like 105 liter um, stand down like wing foil burn, it probably wouldn't feel as good. It would feel more like a beginner burn. And now right. here you have a 105 liter burn that really feels high performance when you are, you know, carving. It doesn't feel like 105. So um, just, you know, reach out to what you know whatever dealer um, you, you want to get your burn and and have them help you with with dialing in the volume for you um, but of course w w w where is the best place to get the the dragonfly wing foil pro center that's it <laughs> so and, and yeah and, and you guys you know anybody that's obviously doing the downwind and had got it down leave comments and Tell us how your progression exactly. was. Like, did you start off with a bigger board? Did you, where are you down to now? And, you know, and I think it helps the whole community out. I mean, we have such a great group, you know, guys in Spokane, a huge group here and, and everything else, you know, and, and we all like learn from each other. Yeah. And I think that that's been a really, really big thing this last couple of years. Yeah, for sure. So drop your comment if you need any of the gear that we display on the YouTube channel, you can always find it on wingfoldprocenter.com. It supports us, what we do, um, and we really appreciate uh, your support. So that's it for today. I hope this was helpful, that you learned something, that you are fired up. The KT Dragonfly, we absolutely love it. Tony is sold, I'm sold, I love it, I love riding it. Um, so if this was helpful, Give us a, a like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks, Tony. Thank you.